on the next episode of Sip Suds and Smokes. Today we're going to go back and revisit three of our favorite IPAs from 2013. Whether we want to admit it or not, we all drank Blue Moon at one point. (laughs) The beers we'll be tasting and discussing today are, from Six Point Brewery, the Classic Resin IIPA that was one of the best of 2013. We also have their Spritzer Bomb IPA. We have Blackstone Brewery's Best of 13 beer, the Atom Bomb IPA, along with their newer Little Jack Low Cow IPA. Also, one of our 2013 best ofs was the classic from Cigar City, High Lie, and also their Taco Babo Red IPA. Like a bag of tacos? That's cool. Dude, I would, I would drink that. We'll be right back after this break. live from the dude in the basement studios why because that's where the good stuff is it sips suds and smokes with your smoke and host the good old boys Suds, suds, it's time for more suds. Welcome, 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 everyone. I don't think anybody's greeted Dave with at least three welcomes ever. No. (laughs) This is to our audience. This isn't to him. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. It wasn't directed towards Dave. That's good. (laughs) Aw. It's all right. I feel welcome. I welcome myself. Okay. Hey, Dave. Welcome. Hey, thanks, everyone. Dave. Thank you for joining. <laughs> this is another Sud segment where we drink beer and we talk about it. Sounds easy, doesn't it? <laughs> well, that's what it said on the pamphlet for me. <laughs> well, maybe it is, but we've won awards doing it. So, you know, hey, yeah. <laughs> here we go. Whatever. I am one of your hosts, good old Juliana. And with me today at the table is good old boy Kendall. I am so happy to be here. Yay! Good old boy, Mike. Despite the repeated lawsuits, I am still here. Look at that enthusiasm, yes. folks. Yes, thank you. <laughs> and good old boy, Dave. Nothing goes over my head. My reflexes are too fast. <laughs> <laughs> I love that movie so much. But anyways. um, Wow. Well, at the end of each season of Sip, Suds, and Smokes, we do a best of episode where each host will talk about some of their favorite products that were covered on the show over the past year. Over time, our tastes and preferences change, right? Because we grow up a little. I'm growing right now. <laughs> I won't say where <laughs> or which direction. <laughs> Horizontally or vertically. <laughs> um, you just... You just stop that right there. <laughs> I can't. It's nature. <laughs> I thought it was nurture. Well, our taste and our preference change, and also new breweries and new beers pop up, like, almost daily. Yes. Not to mention that there are hot new trends constantly coming and going. I had a double goza. <laughs> Pretty much. Imperial Seltzer. kettle sour. Yes. <laughs> With I actually heard somebody say they were going to do a lactose saison. What? And I, yeah. Caperton just ran through a wall. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just it's so wrong on so many levels. I can already hear him printing t shirts and starting the protest. Yeah. <sighs> He's making up some signs right yeah, now. Right. Wow. Well, I thought that it would be cool to look back at two or three of our top picks from a few years ago. Can you believe it that we've been ago. on the air for that long? I can't hey, believe hey. we're on the air right now. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to so see are most of our audience. <laughs> so we're going to see how we like them now, and then also try some newer things from those breweries. So today we're going to go back and revisit three of our favorite IPAs from. 
2013. Whether we want to admit it or not, we all drank Blue Moon at one point. (laughs) Good old boy, Kendall. Would you please give us the lineup for today? The beers we'll be tasting and discussing today are, from Six Point Brewery, the Classic Resin IIPA, a 9.1% beer that was one of the best of 2013. We also have their Spritzer Bomb IPA coming in at 8%. Next up, we have Blackstone Brewery's Best of 13 beer, the Atom Bomb IPA, a 7.2% IPA, along with their newer Little Jack Low Cow IPA with a low 4.1% ABV. Also, one of our 2013 best ofs was the classic from Cigar City, High Lie, at 7.5%, a very well-known IPA. And also their Taco Bago Red IPA at 7.2% ABV. Like a bag of tacos? That's cool. <laughs> Dude, I would, I would drink that. Thank you, Kendall. That was nice. very nice. <laughs> All right, good old boy Dave. What? Give us some Suds ratings. Oh, oh, this is reading. Okay. <laughs> We'll be di- discussing and rating these beers with these Suds ratings, plus our signature belching sounds. Here are those ratings now. Number one, that sucks. Give me anything but a good old boy mic. Are you using your big radio voice? <clears throat> this is the biggest voice I've got, fella. <laughs> Two, was that a belch? <laughs> it's puny. Three, ah, what a relief. Four. A good old boy Mike should really not make any sound. Oh, sorry. I must have misread that. And number five. Listen to that hang time. Give me another. Good old boy Dave. Note to self keep good old boy Dave away from the ratings. Okay, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get to those beers. We're going to talk about each one, give our notes and ratings, and then also talk about other things. You know, stuff. So we're starting with resin? Sure. Yeah, we're going to start it? with Six Point. Six Point was founded in 2014. Wow. Um, that's crazy. And they were home brewers initially, and ah. then the microbrewery. Mm. Is located in a 7,000 square foot factory in Red Hook. Then in November of 2018, Six Point was acquired by Artisanal Brewing Ventures, which already owns Southern Tier and Victory Brewing Companies. Mm. So there's that. Uh, if you don't know, uh, Six Point is uh, based out of Brooklyn, New York. Um, and they. this is one of their uh, perennial... Uh, um, it, there's high availability of this. Uh, there's going to be a new beer that's going to be introduced uh, here in 2014 as well that is going to be able to elevate uh, resin itself. You know, some of the flavor... So is this beer called Uh? Um, um, I think um, that was 14 ums in, in that clip. We've come a long way, folks. Uh, not really. So, everyone, there's <laughs> a new uh, Sip Suds and Smokes drinking game. Every time good old boy I'm Mike so says, so um, so turn off the show. <laughs> <laughs> it's time to head over to that qu- culting show. So, okay, let's really, talk about resin. Really interesting. Um, oh, turn it off. Hmm. The hot profile on this is... Not quite what I remembered it being. The earthiness quality uh, of this particular hop profile, not quite what we think of in many IPAs, you know, today. This is definitely old school. Yeah, um, so old IPA. school. Yeah. I mean, just a solid bitterness that those caramely malts that just you get that sweetness, it's a lot sweeter, you get yeah. a balance. I'm not, I honestly can't remember. It's been so long since I had resin, but it it seems about like resin to me. Yeah, and resin is a really good name for this beer. Oh, it's so super resin. sticky, yeah. sticky yeah. and piney, and it's beautiful and old school. What do you think, JB? You know, I remember having to travel up to Kentucky back in the day to get this, and thinking, "Oh my gosh, this is such a great IPA, and this is so." Unlike anything that we've had, you know, 
of course, everything was bland before. I hate to say that. And this was just like a burst, right, of dank forest loveliness. Yeah. I don't. They don't uh, publish their hot profile that I remember. I, I mean, if you guys so. had to guess, I mean, this is not a... Uh, of a lot of the beers I think we're going to have today, this is definitely not a Citra Mosaic Galaxy Bomb. This is – there's like a, a Motuka or a, a Simcoe would, or something. I would guess some Simcoe, some maybe some even CTZ. Some, yeah, I'm going to go with Simcoe. I think some, that's uh, what's, Centennial. Yeah, it's really uh, – it almost – is tasting like they were going toe to toe with the West Coast style, you know. I think that's uh, absolutely what they were doing in yeah. 2013. Yeah. You know, because at the, at the time Sierra Nevada and uh, and Lagunitas were really pumping out all these huge, you know, sticky sweet, you know, style uh, West Coast IPAs, and I think this was a bit of their. We can deal with those same hops, you know, as well. We'll burn your palate up just like those guys do. Yeah, it does not say it all even on the new packaging um it's still in the same can yeah you know the same size which is great um and the logo has just been updated slightly nine percent nine point one percent abv 103 ibus um the only thing that is different now compared to what it was years ago is that you've got the Statue of Liberty on the barcode, which I thought was kind of huh. sweet. That's interesting. And then um, when it says that it's formulated and brewed by Six Point Brewery, it's now Brooklyn, New York, Parksburg, PA, and Downington, PA. Oh. oh. So they're making it in multiple locations right. now. Right. So there's been expansion, if you will. Oh, you're, you got a hot list. I, I was right on one of them, uh, but Chinook and Centennial. Oh, yeah. Chinook. Chinook. Okay. Now that makes well, yeah, sense. Yeah. So that's why I said the CTZ, because you yeah. get a lot of similarity there. And the Simcoe has also got some of that old school dinky yeah. resininess. Yeah. And that kind of that bite but, to it. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. And, you know, the, the, the thing about the can, too. Is uh, like I wonder how many seltzer buyers are getting thrown off by these cans Cause they've been doing because they've been because they're the can same forever. profile as skinny cans, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's it's it's. I a, hope they get confused and finally move on to something decent yeah. with flavor. But but I think it's safe to say that this is really this is held up. This is held up well, and it's still really yummy. And mm -hmm. you know, in a world now where we have so much lactose in everything, it's nice. To come home to it's this. really good. Isn't it? Yeah. We are rating this a four. Uh, 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 Tiffany, these aren't seltzers. You ruined my bachelorette still party. Still super solid. Yeah. You know? And the cool thing is I've seen Chinook starting to pop up again. Yeah. Uh, I think it's a flavor people are looking for again. We've had enough sweet and juicy. People are cycling back yep. to some of the older stuff. It's very good. I don't recall ever having this on tap. Or not often, anyway. No, and you got to go to Red Hook, buddy. Yeah, I guess you have, I have to been go to up Red north. Hook a lot, and I don't even remember resin, you know, being available on tap in the city, you know, really that much. There's a bunch of other six point beers. Well, so. it does well in a can. We will be back with more in just a minute. Welcome back, everyone. Ooh. So today's episode is a little bit of the old and a little bit of the new. Because that's Mike and Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Let me pick up my fifth gen. Wow. <laughs> so. so what we're doing today, ladies and gents, if you're just tuning in, is taking some beers that we rated highly from the past, seeing how they are now a few years later, and then also comparing some other beers from that brewery that have come out recently. So we've been talking about Six Point from Brooklyn, New York. We fin just finished the resin, and now we're going to get into the Spritzer Bomb. Absence of nipples. <laughs> Spritzer Bomb is an 8% ABV um, beer. It features an easy drinking, well, which featured as easy drinking wine creation. Okay. Yeah. So well, there you go. There's there. There's that. I believe this one is a collab they do with somebody. This is. So Sloop, which is somebody that we have mentioned on a previous episode, and Six Point, they came together over the years to make four versions of a collaborative IPA, uh, which is using their Sloop's Juice Bomb as um, a blueprint. And then they add some wine grapes. Yeah. So mm -hmm. this, this Spritzer Bomb is all the juice of a serious IPA with the tingly 
finish of Sauvignon Blanc grapes. Hmm. Bombs away, is it? How you like them grapes, Mike? You're a wino. I am. And um, it's very interesting. Some other beers I know that, you know, kind of cross over and are using um, some aspect of other, you know, wine yeast or uh, using, you know, grapes. Well, you talked um, a lot about Trillium before. Trillium's you know. dial-in series is, you know, probably I, I consider one of the few people that's done a great job of introducing full, you know, grape juice uh, into the beer itself in a blend. And it was a... Uh, it was a fabulous experience, and, and they've been able to continue making a lot of those beers. Um, this one is more along the lines of it's finishing out dry like a champagne yeast um, would, and that's a lot of what really kind of caught my attention was the wine-like aspect was specifically the yeast component here. It's very light on the tongue. Um, it's very approachable. This is one of those things that... You'd probably sit down and go, how many of these have I had? You've had 14. Oh, okay. Um, not good with an 8% beer. No, probably not. I think you could serve this in like those little wine flutes, like at a party. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people would just think they were having some kind of like, you know, champagne-y wine kind of little thing. Yeah. Yep. I think you get away with that. Yeah, it's it's good, and it shows you the change in people's palates for IPAs. This is not a hot bomb. This is no, not, not resin at all. At all. This yes. is not even remotely close to you know the opening um, beer that we talked about with resin. This is very soft, very approachable. It's very light and airy on the mm -hmm. tongue, juicy and citrusy, and just it's still an eight percent mm -hmm. IPA, but it's it's the completely other end of the spectrum. It's a lot more balanced. Julie is the only other girl here other than Mike. How do you like this beer, and, and would you serve it to your girlfriends? Okay, A, you're really comparing me to Mike. Well, I'm just saying you're both girls. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Yes, I would. I like what they've done here. You know, resin was its own animal, right? And it's beastie, and it's full, and it's in your face, and it's just this hot bomb. I love what the spritzer bomb is on so many levels. Like a, it's modern. Mm -hmm. It really is. It can even like go toe to toe with some of these new England IPAs that's come out. I mean, yes. is it full fledged new England IPA? No, but it's there. It, it can be in the conversation. But what does that even mean anymore? Well, and, and true. true. I mean, honestly, I, I yes. Think, yeah. I think I would put that right up there in that category. It's juicy and soft and easy drinking. Yeah. It is. It's very easy drinking. I think for somebody that is afraid of hops and the astringency that hops can bring, this is a beautiful beer. Very this is a good halfway point. Yeah. And like Mike said, it's very quaffable. Like you could down a few of these um, refreshing and yummy. And I, I like that. Six point can still be relevant, you know, so many years later. Mm. Yeah. Great beer. Um, yep. Yeah. Super solid. We're going to rate the Spritzer Bomb from Six Point a four. Uh, oh, done. Uh, Even if I did have to go to Kentucky to get it. Well, you know, there's that. Okay. Moving on, let's talk about the next coupling of beers and let's go to florida people are realizing that bitterness doesn't translate to good ipas yeah. and we're going to go to tampa and we're going to talk about cigar city's highlight so cigar city was founded in 2007 um and the founder was he had been in the brewing community for many years the company has now grown to produce 170,000 barrels of beer annually with a distribution to 39 states. Since 2010, Cigar City has released their Hunapu Imperial Stout, which everyone in the beer community knows, um, which has been like, and there's even a festival about it. And then as of March 2016, Cigar City has partnered with Longmont, Colorado-based Oscar Blues Brewery, to form Canarchy Craft Brewery Collective, which includes Oscar Blues, Cigar City, Perrin, and the Utah Brewers Collector Collaborative, sorry, outfit that includes Wasatch and Squatters brands. 
So it's, I mean, they got big. They, they might have yes. added a few it, more to that I too. Think, I'm pretty sure they have. I think yeah. there's one in out in California and maybe one in Texas too. So the smaller from, ones. Yeah, yeah. So from the little brewery that could. In Florida, of all states, I mean, they are now everywhere. Tampa is like a hotbed of good breweries, though. You know, I remember the original Scar City, um, and uh, spent quite a bit of time, you know, visiting that original location. Um, I wish I could say that I actually got to know these brewers before they actually, you know, moved into making something commercially, because Highlight was basically their. That was their go-to beer. Um, in fact, I don't believe them really making any more than four beers. Um, you know, they were right out of that, you know, brew pub kind of mentality at that point in time. You had to make a, you know, a brown, you know, uh, uh, you had to make a, a blonde and, you know, th- this, those, these very basic simple Might have styles. To make a stout, you know, like just just hit all the the four corners. And know? they really kind of set that aside, and they said, "We're not going to do the brew pub model. We are going to make four, you know, solid beers, but they're not going to be the ones that you think we're going to make." So, you know, they they made the Maduro, you know, right off the bat. They made the, you know, they put Highlight out there, you know, very uh, right off the get go. Um, so there were definitely beers that I remember being able to get wide, you know, very wide distribution, right, even from the get-go. But um, great hot profile. Uh, I can't remember this hot profile either, and I'm sitting tasting through it as well. And it uh, it's definitely not that, again, it's not that Citra, you know, mosaic bomb, you know, or galaxy that uh, so many um, beers are really made with now. There's definitely something with a very earthy quality again to it. Um, you know, I don't think it's centennial, but th- that wouldn't be a bad guess. I don't think that's a bad guess at all. No, I don't think you're too far off. I'll tell you one of the things that impressed me about these guys is the 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 highlight is very good, but then they did the white oak highlight. Yes, and, and nobody nobody was doing that kind of thing. Hardly. That's true. They were one of the few breweries that were actually barrel aging anything and because they were making some additional beers and and uh, barrel aging them they had access into a barrel broker that they went hmm why don't we uh drop some of this highlight into you know some wine barrels and you know see you know what this is going to produce and i love that white oak line i thought that it softened up the beer that was a really well done beer and i thought that it was a good compliment at the time so here's what i'm seeing for hops for highlight uh altanum amarillo that makes that makes a lot of sense that makes a lot of sense the amarillo is the thing that i think Mm -hmm. is very predominant columbus centennial cascade that Makes a ton of sense. That to me. is and Simcoe. Yeah, I mean, that's that, almost classic. A lot of guys use say, this mix classic, of hops. The seas. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. a classic West Coast. And then, yeah, you, the seas, and you throw in Simcoe and Amarillo. Yeah, and you've yeah. got a West Coast IPA. <laughs> Interesting that a beer that would be this popular for this long has absolutely no Galaxy, no Citra, and and no Mosaic in it. That's crazy. You and know, you know, you can make a beer without mosaic. Hops. Yeah, I would Sipping say that you know, people are scratching their head, going, "Wow, how did they yeah. pull that off for the last this is fifteen an years?" Absolute classic, and yeah. it just when it comes to just classic American IPAs in that West Coast style, you know, this is definitely top five. The thing that's really sticking out with me is the quality of this more than anything. Mm-hmm. You know, this is a beer that I've probably had off and on, you know, over this period of time, and. This tastes just as good as I remember it even yeah, it like does. 15 years ago. Well, and the cool thing is like this is one of the ones you can get at the grocery store. Like you yeah. can just go when you're, you know, whatever and you, you can get a 12 pack and it's not super high priced or anything. And there's a ton of it. It's very re- re- readily available and you can um it's easy to get, you know, and and it's great. And I think they've been able to you know go toe to toe pretty well, you know, on the tap wall. And being able, you know, to put this in a lot of, um, you know, premise, yeah, uh, you know, 
distribution where you can go to a ballpark and get a highlight. You know, you can, you can go to a football game and get highlight. Or you, you know? could go to like a craft beer bar and get highlight. Like it, it, <laughs> it, it, it flies no, in both. You're right. Yeah. Juliana, what are you looking up over there? Oh, I, I'm just trying to remember. I, I was looking up like old notes that I had. This is like, I remember the first time I tried this and it blew me away. And I thought, mm-hmm. oh my gosh, this is coming from Florida of all places. Not to be mean. And just how it was. Banned once again. <laughs> Of course, but it was hoppy and it was comfortable and it was easy drinking and it's still like, I could still down a few of these today. It's not too much of anything. No, it's not. It's very well balanced. And I mean, even today with all of their expansion, it's, it's still pretty darn good. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, One of the cool moments that I remember uh, with highlight and actually with the white Oak version that Dave, you know, had mentioned earlier was they actually have a Cigar City Brewing in the Tampa airport. They do. And I remember the first time, and this was when, you know, you could actually go down to the gate, you know, with your family and everything. And my mom and dad were with me. And I remember, you know, walking over and picking up a six-pack of the White Oak and taking it with me on the plane. And mom was like, wow, you can do that? And I go, yep, mom, I'm definitely doing that. (laughs) And uh, I actually remember bringing the White Oak back for all of you to enjoy off that trip. And... uh, I just thought that was, you know, that was so cool because that def- that bar that beer was so difficult, you know, to find at that point. They didn't make a lot of the white oak, and I remember how much we enjoyed having that and having it fresh, you know, right there sure, uh, sure. off the plane. And, and it's not just that they've got a restaurant in the airport serving beer; they have a brewery in the airport. It is, they, a, yeah. It's a they have a tiny now. pilot system oh, in wow. the airport, and and they make. Airport only beer that you can't yep. even get at the tap room. That's crazy. It's every time I, I actually before you know the world shut down in 2020, I was in St. Petersburg in February, and I made sure I got to the airport like an hour and a half <laughs> earlier than usual so I could go sit and drink fresh beer you before I got on the plane. Before you, uh, you know, I, I love flying out of Tampa because yeah, yeah that's a great place to drink beer. But but that's the thing. I mean, having. And the tap room was really, really great. I mean, I remember the Big Walkers convention and going there and just being amazed at the friendliness and just such a comfortable atmosphere. Yeah, they're good folks. They, I mean, they really, really are. But even besides that, the beer was just, it wasn't crazy over the top, but it was solid and it was good. Whether you had the highlight or a variation of the highlight, or whether you had the Madura Brown, and you know, so good, exactly right. So great stuff. We are going to con- we're going to rate this a five because it's still relevant today. Well deserved. I mean, um, you're, you're looking at four four folks that don't dish that out, you know, just because it's you know it's okayish and not offensive. I think at some point yeah, this beer is- will. Be in the same conversation as like Sierra Nevada Pale Ale is like a, a quintessential American. I like to think it already beer. is. Yeah, you know? it may be. Yeah, but I think it, definitely. When I was over thinking time. top five, I'm thinking you know, um, Two Hearted, you know, Sierra oh, Nevada Torpedo, yeah. uh, this beer, maybe some new school stuff like uh, Anti Hero or Truth. But those mm. IPAs are all following in the, uh, kind of the footsteps of what they did with Highlight. Yeah. Yeah. So now we're going to go totally to a different style. I know. Isn't this great? So another beer that we wanted to highlight, maybe a little newer than the highlight, is the Tokobaga from um, Cigar City. Hmm. This is their red IPA cl- clocking in at 7.2% ABV. With 72 that's a nice, comfortable spot for an for an uh, an IPA as well. Yeah, it's an assertive but balanced ale that marries the pine and citrus quality of Citra hops with an assertive bitterness of Summit hops and then the malt flavors. Mm. And it is very malty, toasty. Yeah. Um, You get all of those flavors you get out of a big amber, but then it comes in with a a big hot bill you get from an IPA. And that's there's not many red IPAs out there. Nobody even calls them that much anymore. Yeah. But yeah, just think of a really hopped up amber ale. I think that's pretty much what it is, like an American amber. Yeah, and, and this is that. Yeah. 
Yeah, super solid. Uh, you know, red uh, red ale IPA. Um, who's the uh, Who's the West Coast um, out of San Diego um, that also they have a brewery in Virginia? Um, Stone friend, no friendship. Uh, Green flesh, green flesh. That's it. Are, do they still make beer? Well, no, they do, but you can't hardly get it anywhere. They had they pulled way. They got bought out by. They something. they then, had a red IPA. That then they had was to pull away. That's really kind of good. the go to yeah. you know red red IPA that I always you know think of. And when I was tasting this today, I think the big difference between the green flash version and uh, the cigar city version is that. The caramel, um, you know, burnt sugar element of the green flash is a lot more pronounced. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This is a lot more subtle. Um, this is probably a bit more approachable. Uh, it's more balanced. Then you, then yeah. you get more of the pine. Yeah. In this one, a ton of pine. Yeah. It's almost that pine grapefruity classic old school yeah. IPA. Oh, yeah. Cause, oh my God. I remember when the green flash, it was called the red, the hop head red That's it. IPA yep. that came out. Oh, yeah. And I thought, oh my God, this is big. So different and yeah. big. And yeah. Yeah. I, I actually like this better than that beer um, just because. This is a lot more balanced. I like how this finishes out. The I remember that beer, you know, finishing out incredibly bitter on the back end, yeah. and it was so pronounced in in a signature element of that beer. Um, I loved the way that that finished out, but I I like the way that this one is finishing out yeah. even better. It's a lot more soft. And yeah, it's soft and it's balanced and it's really approachable for Great a red beer. IPA. And yeah. we're going to rate this one a four. Uh, yeah, you could definitely drink more of this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, it is so balanced, which is rare in some of these big hoppy malty beers. Usually one of them's out of kilter. The bigger they get, the harder it is to keep them in balance. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, but again, this is nice, and I think again, Cigar City is still relevant, even you know today as opposed to many years ago. Very much so, yeah. And I love the fact again, the quality of both these beers was just top notch, spot on. We'll be back with more in just a minute. Very cool. Welcome back, everyone. Today is a a little bit of memory lane meets current stuff. Yeah, so uh, this original episode, the um episode. (laughs) (laughs) Things that make you go, um? Yeah, it's a crutch word that I use way too often, and I'm even finding myself, I'll probably be saying it another 14 times, Uh, just to thank you, uh, remember that moment. There were a lot of themes on that particular episode that I remember talking about with everybody one of the one of the main things that i remember at that um, particular time was <laughs> there were so many hot bombs that mm-hmm. were coming out and everybody was chasing i can create something that is 110 ibus and just blow away your palate and it was like this huge contest i remember so many of those beers were chasing that ultimate moment of saying i can stuff more hops in this Two beer and create a better bunghole <laughs> What's the size of that again, Dave? Two inch bunghole. Yeah, that's about what everybody was working on uh, shoving enough hops through <laughs> something about that size to create this huge flavor bombs. You, know, you had these big, huge beers like Lagunitas Maximus that were coming out. You know, you had the you know one twenty minute you know IPA. You had yeah. you know all yeah. these. Sh- sh- super. The you more would, hops, the better. Yeah. How much IBUs it can you cram like into a beer? It was, a, it it was like, an arms race. And you mentioned yeah. in the last segment, Green Flash. Green Flash had one called uh, Palette Wrecker. Yeah. 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 I remember and it that. was a Palette Wrecker. Yeah. It was a barley wine from, from hell, if I it's remember burning. right. You know, it just, <laughs> yeah. I remember setting the Palette Wrecker kind of back in the back of the cellar and going, yeah, I'm touching you for a couple of years, buddy. So, yeah, I mean, when you think about, you know, how the the style of beer has evolved, do you think that it's moved to a place where you're not chasing just the ability of, you know, overpowering everything with hops? I, I feel like, you know, most brewers have moved to the point where there's the hop blend and profiles is a lot more finesse element to it. I, that's... 
that's part of the evolution. I think that it's this come around. Well, sure. I mean, yeah, I think you're absolutely right. Uh, although I feel like I've seen hints that the ping, pendulum is about to swing back that way. I've noticed hazier beers getting bitter again. I've noticed other breweries just coming out with straight up bitter IPAs. And you got to wonder, as we've been so sweet and juicy so long, are we ready to go back to just, a, you know, enamel stripping uh, bitterness? I'm not. I'm always going to be sweet and juicy. But here's the so. thing is, you know, in 2013, 2014, everything was about that astringency, that sharpness, mm-hmm. that dank forest, you know, cat piss, forgive me for saying that. Floor. That was there. No, but it was a thing, right? Yeah. And it was so much more than the basic bland loggers that we were getting that didn't have a hop profile. All of a sudden, this big, huge hop for profile came about then we got into the sweet and then we got into the juicy and then we got into the lactose laden stuff you know where it was almost too sweet to really be even considered a beer now maybe we are swinging back but i think you're right mike i think a lot of breweries learn to work with hops in a new way there's new hop technologies out there that helps them to get the flavors rather than just the pure bitterness and and i think we saw a maturity in the industry about what hops could do well and i think that you know the uh hop production as well as the delivery of the raw ingredients has also you know come a long way i mean back 10 years ago you know when we did this original episode it was all about how fast can you rush things from being harvested to utilizing them and then you were working with things that were vacuum packed Mm -hmm. and then it was just a matter of you know they were dealing with elements of exposure to oxygen would basically um diminish the how you know the quality of the hops you were working with sure there's so many different things to work with now um you have uh you have lupulin powder Mm-hmm. Um, that, you know, has really come around and been revolutionary for mm-hmm. a lot of brewers to work with. You know, you've had uh, cryo hops, you know, that people are working with that is preserving a lot of the aromatica essence, you know, of the hops. And you're getting all of those oils and elements that you get in fresh hop beers. And many of those new hops have less of the vegetative matter we had in the old school pellets. So yeah. you don't get any of the f- off flavors those might have contributed, the grassiness or other things when you're yeah, doing a the big stems, dry hop. Right, yeah. Right. yeah. Dare but, I say it's a more refined version of what hops can be, Yeah, you know? It, definitely when you look at, you know, probably what was being shoved in the pellets, you know, to work with 10 years ago, you're working with elements of the whole cone and a lot of components around that that, frankly, didn't actually make a contributory element to the flavor profile, you know, that you're right. aiming for. Right. right. Um, you know, you see this a lot of time in other things, especially in grape cultivation, you know, that I'm thinking about where you get into, you know, orange wines that, you know, have elements of the skins and the stem and everything else, you know, mm-hmm. around them. And it really has a very different, you know, component of uh, flavoring component than wines where you're just crushing the fruit alone. Sure. And I think that that's the way that hop producers have come around. I think that after time, I, I think it's been uh, several things. I think one is that the brewers have demanded more of the hop producers um, in terms of being able to figure out a distribution model where whatever I'm tasting in the field, I want to be able to stick that in the tank at the end of the day. Yeah. And they don't want to deal with all this elements of rushing and only having, I can, I can produce this during fresh hop season, you know, in the fall, but after that, dude, it's, you know, um, it's anybody's guess. And I, I love the fact that there have been brewers that have learned to navigate that over a long period of time. I love the conversation that we just had about Highline, where when you look at the hops that they've been working with for such a long period of time, they have learned to navigate this with great skill. Yeah, efficiency, and it's very dialed in. And that's the thing now is you want this instant gratification and this dialed in flavor. 
Well, I thought I just wanted to revisit, you know, some of that conversation we had on the original episode. But let's get to uh, another beer here from Blackstone. So brewery number three that we're talking about today is Blackstone Brewery, which is Nashville's oldest craft brewery, which was founded by Ken Taylor and Stephanie Wines. May she rest in peace. Yep. So this started in 1994. And they have still continued to receive many awards for many beers over the years. I mean, we're lucky to have this here in our backyard. It's crazy. You know, we have uh, have one brewery that's probably garnered more, you know, GABF medals in in probably a five-state region, you know, just all by themselves. And if you took everybody else combined, you know. Yeah, it's it's really crazy. Well, but, just off one beer too. Yeah, yeah, really. Just rock solid beers. Yeah, I mean, you, yeah, St. Charles Porter is just you know definitely not going to get any better than that. But I remember when the atom bomb came out and oh, yeah. how it was like a revelation. Like, oh my gosh, what was Nashville's competing in the <laughs> well, it national was definitely you know, platform. stretching the bounds of what Blackstone did. Yeah, they were the exactly. classic '90s brew pub. So you can think of every style they had this was, was a not, brew pub style. This was not this, in their wheelhouse no, at all. This this surprised everybody in this town because it's a solid IPA. Mm-hmm. Old school classic West Coast. Yeah. I mean this is an explosion of Centennial, Cascade, Chinook and Simcoe and you know, big in your face coming in at only 7.3% ABV. I mean, in the scheme of things. This has got to be swinging up there in terms of IBUs, you know, yeah. definitely in that, you know, 90, 100 range. This is only 70. 76 I was going to say 70. I can't yeah. believe that. All right. Well, it's, it's tasting just a, a really good use of the hops. And for those of you who have never had this, we've talked about highlight. We've talked about resin, somewhere in between. So yeah, if you can picture 100%. that. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. A little... Got that nice up front, sharp pine kind of earthiness, and then a nice bitter finish, but it doesn't blow you up. Mm-hmm. I would say the star of the show here is the Centennial. Um, I really think that's um, both the the predominant hot profile. And I think it's also the glue in between, you know, all of these pieces. It's such know, really a beautiful well. hot for these yeah. beers. Yeah. It's I mean, not, uh, you know, it's a well-made base beer and... I really like how this has great balance and finishes out. You know, it, it really has just good balance all the way from, you know, beginning to end. Well, you can tell from the color, too. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's, it's not just light malts. There's a little bit of, you know, uh, kind of caramel or something going on in there. Yeah. yeah. This one has a bit of a kind of a red tinge to it. You know, it I does. Think. Yeah, yeah, it does. But it still holds up. And this, we're going to rate it for. Cool. Now, the flip side of that, Blackstone has released what they call Little Jack, which is a 4.1% 35 IBU. And it's got a lot of Centennial hops, um, but this is their downgraded version. Of uh, Hop Jack. Yeah, of Hop Jack. Which is their kind of their... That's more than Atom Bomb, I would say. Hop Jack is kind of their flagship IPA. Another really solid one. But um, Little Jack is sort of the low cal- – I think their venture into the low-cal session IPA um, game. That's a good point, though, because the, the Hop Jack does come across differently than the Atom Bomb. Mm-hmm. Um, it's been a while since I've had it, but I do remember just, it was also a big old school IPA, but it was, it, it I don't know. It was it more dank, more, it was more dank more than, than, it was, than yeah. the atom bomb. Than the atom yeah. bomb. And so the, the atom bomb was a little bit more balanced in terms of hop flavor. And you but, can actually still get hop Jack as well. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's little checks. Not, not bad though. It's, you know, like all low cow, low ABV IPAs. It's just hard to make a hoppy, bitter beer that's going to balance out the low amount of malt you're going to well, need to get that kind of thing. ABV. Yeah. But you're still getting a decent amount of like hot flavor, you know, for it being such a lower ABV. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but it's not overdone. You yeah. know. Oh no. And it's and it's in you know four. What'd you say? Four point one. Four point one. So Good it Lord. it is a little thin, but that's to be expected with a four percent beer. Sure. Sure. Uh, it's it's. Definitely lighter. You're not gonna you're gonna get a lot of caramel malt out of this. It's yeah. a it's a lighter grain bill, but but the hops still work. You still know you're yeah. drinking a bitter beer. Yeah, and if that's yeah. what you're looking for, if you're if you're wanting, 
if the first part of your beer shopping experience is I want locale or something, but I want an IPA, you're not going to find much better. Not than a lot this. of options. No, and yeah. you're still going to get some hot bitterness out of yeah. this. I mean, it's it's a hard beer to make. I mean, you think Lagunitas had one that was like under 100 calories. It was supposed yeah. to be a hoppy beer. I know Founders all day is kind of thrown into this category, of, although it's yeah. a little bit bigger. It's it's hard to make a light, low-cal beer with bitterness and make it work. But yeah. they've done a good job with this one. It's not bad, yeah. Yeah, I re- really remember what was going on quite a bit when both these beers came around and the discussion that, you know, Ken was having with their distributor was that they were moving to the point of merchandising a lot of their beer in grocery stores for the very first time. And <clears throat> it was moving them from a brew pub model and where they were pretty much a uh, very localized, you know, distribution with liquor stores and they really had to create a series of beers that were going to appear to a much bigger yeah. audience. Mm-hmm. And I think this was, you know, part of what they decided to do. There was, uh, oh, excuse me. Um, <laughs> uh, um, uh, um, uh, strawberry F um, that came oh, out uh, about this strawberry picnic that came yeah. out around the same time that Little Jack did. And part of what they were dealing again was they were trying to appeal to a much broader, you know, palette around. Well, this. when you're going into the grocery store, you know, it's not like moving into a craft beer store or you know something like that. It's a completely different audience. I mean, everybody we all buy groceries, but not everybody goes into a craft beer store. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't go so far to say that you know, Little Jack is just an incredibly watered-down version of anything. If anything, I just feel like they just backed off, you know, on both alcohol and the hot profile. Oh, absolutely. You know, yeah, 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 I don't, I don't yeah, totally. Jack, yeah. Yeah. Yep. We're going to rate this one a three. I think that's the trap a lot of people fall into, though, is they'll take a big beer and just water it down. I don't think these guys did that. No, I don't think that happened at all. Now, we have a couple minutes left, so let's talk about a couple of other breweries that we, I mean, a couple of other beers that we have from the breweries that we have talked about. So, in terms of Cigar City, you know, we have talked about big hot bombs. Well, let's talk about fancy papers for a minute. This one is 6.5% ABV, 60 IPUs, Mm. and this is using Strata, Sabro, and Idaho 7, which are newer hops Mm -hmm. in the lexicon. Very creamy. Yeah. Creamy. It's everything you think you're gonna get Juicy. in a hazy, but it's nothing about it's offensive. It's it's like no. an everyday hazy. This and, is not bitter. And I well, but it's it's more it's bitter enough to me that it's not one of the sweetie kind of little juicy yep. bottles. Yeah. But I like it because it's a little different than the traditional, you know, like New England IPA. Hundred percent, hundred percent. We're gonna rate this one a four. Yep. Uh, uh, uh. Now, quickly, we will talk about um, six points fancy or party favor. Mm. Not a fan. This one's not doing it. No. <laughs> and I think maybe it's coming it's, right off of that. It's that, lac- uh, that lactose. That's what it is. Well, yeah. party favors is considered <sighs> a double New England IPA. This is coming in at 8.4%. We, yeah, mm-hmm. They should have stopped it. Okay. So for them, IPA is the rule. Yeah. Yep. We'll rate this one. We're going to rate this one a two. And then last but not least, we're going to talk about Blackstone's Session Player. Which is a great session IPA as far as they go. We talked about low calorie, low yeah. ABV. It's hard to I do agree. well, but this was a good one. Yeah. We'll give it a solid three. Yes, we will. Thank you so much for joining us on this episode. This has been great. It was good to come back and revisit, you know, IPAs, um, you know, in a then and now discussion. So yeah. Make beer yeah, better, exactly. bitter again, please. Yeah, almost, right? Well, if you're listening to us online, do yourself a favor and tap. Give it a little tappy. Tap, tap, tap a room. Tap that subscribe button, please. The easiest way to listen to our show is to ask Siri, Alexa, Google, or Uncle Larry, your favorite crazy uncle, 
play podcast, Sip, Suds, and Smokes. Don't ask Uncle Larry to tap it. We love your feedback, and you can reach us online anytime at info at sipsudsandsmokes.com. Our daily tasting notes flow out on Twitter every day at Sip, Sud, Smokes, and our Facebook page is always buzzing with lots of news. You'll also be able to interact with the thousands of other fans on those social media platforms. Do us a favor and take the time to rate this episode if you're listening to us online. Five stars. That's a big help to us, and we get to see your feedback as well. Good boy, Kendall. Thanks for being here. It was a pleasure. I love a good IPA. Please tell us about your blog. My beautiful wife and I blog about the good news of good beer at BeerMakes3.com. Instagram, too. Good boy, Dave. I mean, hey. Mike. Oh, dang. <laughs> really? Did you do that just like right there? I That's just went said. there. You want to do it at the same time, Dave? No. Okay. Well, come back and join us for another exciting episode of Sip, Suds, and Smokes. I'll ask you to keep on sipping. Good boy, Dave. I wasn't listening. I was thinking of something else. Yeah, that was always true. <laughs> <laughs> Check me out on Instagram at Good Boy Dave. This is Good about Good Girl Juliana. Thanks for joining us. Keep on chuggling. Remember the past and move forward. Stay away from lactose. This has been a one tan hand production of Sip, Suds, and Smokes, a program devoted to the appreciation of some of the finer slices of life. From the dude in the basement studios, your host, the good old boys, will see you all next time.